da 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 Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Yeah, so this is going to be another short stream, guys. Another short stream. Yeah, yeah, because I have big plans coming up. I have big, big plans coming up. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Uh, but anyway, uh, this week, it's going to be business as usual. Business as usual this week. It's just that next week and, and after, there's going to be a little bit of a, a change up, a little bit of a switch up. So there you go. Um, but, uh, oh my gosh, what, what, am I, what am I going to be talking about? That's a good question. Uh, so the agenda is no stream game. No gaming let's play. No game this stream. Again. Yeah. I know. Ah, the thing is, I I couldn't find any games that seemed like good, fun English practice, but were American themed. There, there's plenty of American style games, but to be honest, not very many that you know had something that was very very useful if you wanted to you know practice your listening or your reading or anything like that. So, and also, and also, I'm really, really busy, and I just can't uh, spend the time to uh, to be playing some really long games while I'm, I'm researching for this stream. Um, but but the games are coming back. The games will come back. For example, um, for uh, August, there's going to be a game, uh, a couple of games that I'm going to be playing. I'm going to be finishing up some Taiwanese games uh, in uh, September. And then for Halloween, I'm going to play some scary games. So there you go. Um, so I've got a lot of plans. It's just that for this month, we're just going to kind of take it easy. I'm taking it easy a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to cool off just a little bit because it's getting really hot, right? And I'm also that also means I've just been really busy. Um, and also, this will be the last live stream for July. Okay, so this stream is the last live stream. Uh, after this, uh, I will not be live streaming for the rest of the month. But don't worry. There will be videos. There will be content on this channel uh, all month. So don't worry. And so this is America's month. Okay. This is America's month. And uh, uh, so I thought I would share my personal memories of three American cities uh, while also uh, sharing some fun facts. Yeah, I thought I'd do that. All right, so let's get to it. Let's start with the first city. Let's start with the first city. And I thought it, it's kind of an obvious city. Let's try that again. So our first city is kind of obvious because it's my name. That's right. I'm going to talk about uh, Detroit. Detroit. So if you look on the map, it's right over, it's right over there where you see the, the red dot. The red dot. And it's a very, very far north city. Yeah, the city is very far north. Um, it's cold a lot. So let me tell you a little bit of history, of, of my personal history with this, uh, this city. So uh, in America, America is an immigrant country. America is an immigrant country. A lot of Americans who, who live here, who call this their home, um, their, their parents, grandparents, or great-grandparents aren't originally from here. They're from other countries. And my ancestors, not really ancestors, my, my great-grandfather, uh, he came from uh, Eastern Europe. And, and he came over to America, and he started a family, and he raised a family. And my grandfather, my grandfather, uh, ran away from home. True story. And he, and he ran away all the way up to Detroit, because at the time, the automobile industry was just started. And um, technology was still pretty new, but it, it, Detroit was where all of the technology was being developed and all of the cars were being developed. So radio, movie technology, like movie projectors, and also cars and uh, all, all sorts of vehicles and machines were being manufactured here in Detroit. 
So were they being uh, manufactured in other places in America? Yeah, yeah, they were. But it was Detroit, which was the heart of all of this industry. And my grandpa wanted to be a part of it as a young man. And so he, he ran away there. He got a job there. He met a pretty lady. They got married and they started their own family. And my dad was born. So my dad was born and raised here in Detroit. And, um, and when I was growing up, I mean, of course, I didn't, I didn't grow up in Detroit. I grew up somewhere else. But, but Detroit was always this place that my dad talked about. And growing up, I'd visited uh, Detroit or the state uh, that Detroit's in, which is called Michigan, um, uh, once or twice, once or twice. Um, and then, uh, and then for a really long time, 30 years, uh, I didn't, I didn't visit. And when I mean visit, I mean like for a few days. So I don't really know a whole lot about Detroit, except from the stories my dad told me. So I, I didn't see Detroit for 30 years, but in those, in that time, Detroit had been really important in movies TV shows, um, uh, stories uh, from video games, even uh, from books. And of course, the news, unfortunately, the news, because Detroit is kind of a violent city. There's a lot of crime uh, in, in Detroit, and it's still a major city for industry. But because of the pandemic, I am back in America, and I decided I would get, I'd make my start, just like my grandpa did here in Detroit. And so here I am. Uh, there you go. Jack Detroit, living in Detroit. It makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, Detroit has a lot to it. But what I'm going to tell you instead is I'm going to tell you a few interesting facts that are, that are true, true facts about Detroit. So for example, it's called the Motor City. That is Detroit's nickname. Um, it's the Motor City. It is the the first uh, mile of concrete highway was was made here. The first highway, the first four way three color traffic light was developed here. And it has the very world's first city freeway, connecting the different cities. So, yeah, the very first one. Pretty cool, huh? Um, so uh, there was a time in America's history, a hundred years ago, when alcohol was illegal. That was a time called prohibition. Prohibition is a time when, when the, the government said, nope, you can't sell and you can't have and you can't drink alcohol. That's pretty amazing, right? It's pretty amazing. And, uh, and during this time, of course, what did Americans do? They, they, they bought it illegally. They, they traded it illegally, and usually it came from Canada because Detroit, if you look on the map, it is right next to Canada. Um, and so, so Canadians would like bring in alcohol. Um, now, also, also, Detroit is very famous as the Paris of the Midwest. The Paris of the Midwest. Let's see if you can agree. Um, here is here is the city at night. Here is the city at night. And actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little a little clue. This picture is taken from the Canadian side <laughs> of Detroit, but still still a beautiful picture, right? Ah, uh, yeah, the Paris of the Midwest. And do you know why it was called the Paris of the Midwest? Is because it's also the place of the world's first soda. That's right. Detroit is where their very first cola was sold, and it was called Werner's Ginger Ale. Yeah, before there was Pepsi, before there was Coke, before there was whatever soda you like to drink, there was Werner's, and it was started here in Detroit. Detroit has a park, just like, just like New York City has Central Park. Detroit has Belle Isle Park. Which, is, which has a golf course, a museum, basketball course, and baseball fields, and it is the largest island park in the U.S. It's pretty big, and it's really cool. Uh, Detroit is also the number one city of all American cities for eating potato chips.
That's right. Uh, Americans love their potato chips, but nowhere more than Detroit. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy, in the middle of the 20th century, he did something really, really cool. He started a record company for African Americans, and he invented a, a genre of music called Motown, and the rest is history. Motown started here in Detroit. But you know what? It doesn't stop there. Sure, Motown started here. Yeah. But also, so did techno and electronic music also started here. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of cities that say, no, 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 that's not true. Actually, it's absolutely true. It was started here in Detroit. And because of that, a lot of the very famous singers from Motown and electronic music came from Detroit. Uh, so, for example, Aretha Franklin um, would be one. Um, then we also have some uh, pop music like Madonna, uh, Aliyah, and uh, the White Stripes all come, came from here. And, of course, if you listen to rap, Eminem, Eminem is from here. And he has a lot of songs about uh, being uh, growing up in Detroit. And uh, finally, the last trivia I'm going to share about Detroit is sports. And not the usual sports that you think of. Actually, I'm going to talk about bowling. The most registered professional bowlers come from Detroit. Detroit. So next, I want to, uh, I want to move to... The other side of the U.S. I want to move all the way from Detroit, for where is in the kind of at the top there, and I want to go all the way across to the very, very front, where you can see the very front on the left side of the map, San Francisco. So why am I talking about San Francisco? Well, it's because that is my hometown. It's where I was born. I wasn't born in Detroit. Yeah, I know. My name is Jack Detroit. But I wasn't born in Detroit. I just lived there. I was born in San Francisco. So you might be wondering, hey, why did your parents name you after a city? I don't know. So I want to talk a little bit about Detroit. Uh, San Francisco, sorry. So San Francisco. Uh, so San Francisco, uh, I grew up there. And when I was growing up there, it was a very multicultural, very international city. And also a city with a lot of history. And this was before there was Silicon Valley and before there, were, there was social media and before there was uh, Apple computers and Google and all of that. It's way, and Tesla and Elon Musk, all of that is way before that. So it's a very, very different, very artsy uh, uh, city. So a lot of music, a lot of art, a lot of theater, uh, and a lot of movies. Star Wars was made here. So it's got these, and it's got a very rich culture to it, eh, and then with the arrival of Silicon Valley, a lot of that's changed. Okay, so a lot of that has changed. So, um, so uh, my memories, my memories of San Francisco is, uh, for example, um, on Christmas Eve, my family didn't do. What many families do, many families have their own customs, but my family, we always got Chinese food takeout. And San Francisco Chinese food is authentic Chinese food. In other parts of America, there's American Chinese food. It's not real Chinese food. It's American Chinese food. But except in San Francisco, in San Francisco, it's Chinese Chinese food. The real thing. So, um, that would be, you know, that would be our uh, Christmas Eve uh, dinner. I was just take out Chinese food. Uh, and um, uh, uh, in the summer, we would go uh, take the bus and go see a baseball game. Because uh, at the time, baseball tickets were kind of cheap. And we'd see football games and we would freeze. Because uh, in the fall, uh, it was really, really, really cold at night. It was super, super cold at night. Uh, it's kind of different now, unfortunately. But I, but my my early memories of San Francisco is just a really, really cold city. 
San Francisco is kind of a mysterious city because there's fog and the fog at night hides things and makes things quiet. So it's a very mysterious city sometimes. Sometimes. All right. So I'm going to, I'm glad I'm going to do this. While we're talking about San Francisco, I'm going to share some, some facts about San Francisco. Real true facts. So California, the state, is where San Francisco is. And the flag, the flag for California, uh, shows a picture of California with stars. And it also has a big bear. And the model for the bear was, was real. There was a real bear that was the, the example that they drew and put on the flag. And that bear lived in San Francisco in the San Francisco Zoo. Now, it's kind of a sad story. This bear, his name was Monarch because he was the king of all bears. And what's really sad is actually he was the, he was the only bear. Um, he was part of a, a, a bear called a grizzly, but a, but a special kind of grizzly, the biggest one. Uh, these grizzly bears were the biggest bears in North America, and unfortunately, uh, we hunted them until there were no more. They became extinct, and Monarch was the very last one, and when he died, they were all gone forever. Uh, the Great Depression, the whole world suffered. During the Great Depression, a lot of jobs were lost. A lot of ec economies really suffered terribly. Except for San Francisco. It was kind of crazy. In, in, in a way, actually, San Francisco boomed economically during the Great Depression. Um, it was a time when radio dramas became really popular. Um, it, even though there was Hollywood making movies, a lot of people started making movies in San Francisco. Literature exploded during the Great Depression. Art was was supported and, and paid for. If you were an artist, you could get work in San Francisco. Impossible in other places in America. Of all of this, uh, uh, of this success, San Francisco and California had the money to build not only one bridge, but two bridges. And not just two bridges, but have a world fair in it. So the Golden Gate Bridge and the Bay Bridge and the World's Fair were all hosted in San Francisco and made during uh, the Great Depression. So there you go. Uh, so everybody likes to wear good jeans. Jeans are cool. Jeans are a very American, right? Well, jeans were invented in San Francisco. So short story, short story. Uh, 150 years ago, there was a gold rush. Gold was discovered in California. So San Francisco was the place where people came to begin their journey to find gold. And there was a man who, um, he made uh, uh, equipment for the miners, for the people who went to find the gold in the mountains of California. <clears throat> um, but, but he also uh, would sometimes uh, be asked to use the materials using, used for camping and for tents and that kind of thing uh, to, to help the miners who couldn't do their shopping for new clothes. So he would just make really, really strong clothes for these miners out of the same material that, the, that was used for the camping equipment. And, and then after the gold rush died out and, and uh, better materials were, were invented for tents and whatnot, um, th this guy who, who uh, had this business with all this material uh, realized, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I made clothes with this fabric that works really, really well just going to keep doing that. And, and it seems to be really popular. And it was kind of like the style for San Francisco, the style for California. And like, if you're a California person, you wore Levi's jeans. And then eventually, the rest of the world realized they were very cool. So they started doing that too. And that's why we have jeans today. Okay, next, Chinese fortune cookies. You know, fortune cookies, little, little cracker 
that you get at the uh, when you eat Chinese food in America and you open it up and there's a message inside or some wise words or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, um, the, the point is um, uh, these fortune cookies, uh, we call them Chinese fortune cookies because every Chinese restaurant sells them. And guess what? They're not Chinese. They're not. They were invented by a Japanese American. Uh, who who wanted to kind of you know uh, make treats uh, for his customers in his Japanese restaurant and uh, and they became so popular that the cookie company that helped uh, him make these fortune cookies uh, the other Japanese restaurants would would imitate him and then during World War II World War II unfortunately the American government did a terrible terrible thing they took all of the Japanese looking people and put them into prison. Really bad, really bad. They should not have done that, but they did it. And the Chinese restaurant owners took over the Japanese restaurants and uh, thought, "Hey, wait a minute! They're, they're you know, using these uh, these fortune cookie things. So that's a, that's kind of a great uh, thing. So we'll just steal that." And ever since then, Chinese restaurants uh, would just you know use the fortune cookie idea. And after you know a hundred years, now we just assume they're Chinese. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. Last trivia about the Golden Gate Bridge, okay? Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge is this weird orange-red color, right? Yeah. Um, it's not gold. Actually, it'd be a really dumb idea to paint the Golden Gate Bridge gold. And it's not ca called the Golden Gate Bridge because of the bridge. It's called the Golden Gate Bridge because of the area. The area where it is is called the Golden Gate, uh, the place where people come to find their gold. Um, but the bridge itself is just a regular bridge, and it's painted this weird orange color. That's because in in those days, you know, a hundred years ago when the bridge was being made, we didn't have a good way to protect the metal from the the fog and the the wet air of the sea. Uh, if we didn't do that, then, the, then the, the bridge would get all rusted and would fall apart and break, right? So we needed a special material, a special paint to protect the metal. And unfortunately, that special paint was only one color. It was this orange color, weird orange color. And then uh, eventually, eventually all paint could be used to protect metal. There's no limit to the colors. But by then, people got used to the color. And so in uh, every few years, when we had to paint the bridge again, because, you know, paint, paint comes off, you know, uh, we just kind of kept with the same color. We didn't change it because people got used to it. Now, we could, we could paint it any color we wanted, but nope, just kept it the same color. There you go. All right, so next. What's next? Well, I am going to talk about Los Angeles, and that's this place right over here. I'm going to tell you, my, my personal memory of Los Angeles is this. Uh, I grew up in San Francisco, and then I went to college in Southern California, very, very near Los Angeles. And I and during college, I went to San Francisco, sorry, San Francisco, Los Angeles uh, in college. Uh, I went to Los Angeles many, many, many times. Many, it, it was a very easy drive from my school to go to Los Angeles. And uh, Los Angeles was a cool place when you're a young when you're a young person. Uh, it's exciting to, to go to the big city. And it was a different city. It was a new to me. You know, you know, uh, Hollywood and uh, theaters and, and, and uh, movies and TV shows and the beach. Uh, you know, it's got all of that and the rich people's houses and all of that. So very, very exciting. And another thing is, uh, I had a brother who lived there. I had a brother who lived there, and he was he was a young dude. He he just graduated from college, and he had a good job, and he made lots of money, and yeah, and so yeah, it's cool. So I I actually stayed with him for a year. I lived with him for for a year, uh, and it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. 
this was a really, really long time ago. And in that time, in that time, it was just in the very, very beginning of when something weird happened in, in, in Los Angeles. Uh, fashion was a big deal. Fashion changed all the time. And sometimes it got really weird. Um, and uh, 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 also, uh, people would dress up in costumes and just and their idea is um if they were a superhero you could get your picture taken with them and you could give them a little money and that way these people who were basically homeless um they, uh, but would, would be able to get some money just you know it was honest work you know i mean they were they were they were trying to be like a superhero or a comic book hero or some or a Hollywood celebrity. And then, you know, people could go, hey, it's kind of cool. I'm getting my picture taken next to Batman or Spider-Man. And, and eventually it became a really common thing to do. So if you go to L.A. today, you'll see a lot of people in costumes trying to make some money. Yeah. Uh, so that is my memory. My memory. Oh man, I would go surfing. I go. I went surfing a lot. Um, I would go driving into the mountains. I went to the mountains many times. It's it's really, it's really interesting. The mountains go right up to the city, and then it, the city is right next to the sea. So um, let's do a little trivia. About San, uh, about San Francisco. I, my brain is stuck on San Francisco. I don't know why. I haven't been to San Francisco in 21 years. All right, so Los Angeles, some trivia. Uh, okay, uh, by 1923, nearly 25% of all of the world's oil came from Los Angeles. That is true. Uh, right in the middle of Los Angeles, there are oil factories. Yep. Everybody's heard of Beverly Hills and Rodeo Drive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the their names actually come from the place where they are, not for any special reason, uh, but they are the they are the place where all of the the celebrities and the rich people of LA have their really really huge houses and their beautiful houses. But in the beginning, it was a ranch called Beverly Hills, and Rodeo Drive was the road from downtown LA to this ranch. And it had a huge farm where they grew lima beans. Yeah, that's right. But actually, it went pretty quickly from lima beans to mansions pretty fast. In Los Angeles, there is a giant pit filled with tar. Tar is a natural substance. It's a material that is, a, that is like, it looks like oil, but it's very, very thick, 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 thick oil. And it's been around for millions of years. And that is why uh, this pit contains the bones of dinosaurs. It's, tr it's true. Dinosaurs. Yeah. Okay. I think it is time for us to talk about Hollywood. And my memory of Hollywood is, in the year that I that I lived with my brother, I had all of these weird part-time jobs. I also went to summer school. I went to school part-time. But I also dated girls. And all of the girls and all of my, my new friends in L.A., except for me, except for me, but all the people I knew wanted to be movie stars yeah they wanted they wanted to be famous in hollywood in some way and i didn't i didn't 
um, I actually I actually was more interested in the history of movies, the history of Hollywood, and the story behind the scenes of the movies. I, I didn't want to be in front of a camera uh, at all. Yeah, here I am making a video talking about Hollywood. So I don't know what happened. I made a big turn in my life. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, that's my memory of Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what about some trivia? Let me share some trivia about Hollywood. The original, original sign for Hollywood actually was, it was a longer word. It was called Hollywood Land. Yeah, the first sign was Hollywood Land, and eventually the land part fell down and just stayed down. There is a street on Hollywood Boulevard, and if you look on the sidewalk, the sidewalk has stars on it, big stars, with famous people's names on them. And that is a way of making these people forever famous forever important. And this is called the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame uh, is not a, it's not a gift. It's not some celebration. Okay, you're famous now. We put it on there. No, you are the star and you have to pay for it. And it costs $30,000. So if you are a famous star and you want to have your star on there, you got to pay for it. And a lot of celebrities... They, they don't want to do it because they, they feel like, oh, that makes the, I'm not so special, you know. And a lot of people say, oh, I'll pay for it, I'll pay for it. But Hollywood, the city of Hollywood says, nope, if you want your star, it has to be you. It can't be your friends. Do it. Um, Frank Sinatra, you know, old blue eyes. Uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, he has three uh, Hollywood stars. On the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He has one for movies, one for music, and one for television. The world famous uh, record label, the headquarters for the record label, Columbia Records, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the number one biggest music company in the world. There's a light on the top of it, that blinks off and on, on, off and on. Um, and that's because in America, all tall buildings need to have a light at the top that blinks for airplanes so people don't crash in them. This one is special, though. The light at the top of the Capitol Records building is special. It blinks in Morse code. Morse code is the signal to send messages if you can't uh, write the message. And it blinks out in Morse code Hollywood. Um, and finally, um, the, the last trivia that I'm going to say is Hollywood is both a city inside of the city of Los Angeles. It is also an area. It is a, an area on a map of Los Angeles. So it's both city and an area. It's, it's complicated. But it's, it's also just a general place. It's not exact. It's just kind of a guess. It's all three things. So a lot of TV shows and, and movies and and YouTube channels and podcasters will say, you know, live from Hollywood uh, when actually they're not. They are in a city near Hollywood or maybe even in Los Angeles or maybe just in Southern California. But... It's kind of a common thing to just go ahead and say, yeah, yeah, everywhere is Hollywood. It's just, it's just, it's a mental place. Hollywood is a mental place. But my memory of Hollywood is, it's kind of a strange place. It's, it's beautiful, but also sometimes not beautiful. Kind of, kind of, kind of dirty. Um, magical. It's, it's, it can be a magical place, but also a, a little too real, a little too realistic, like painfully realistic.
kind of kind of cold. Uh, so it's got a lot of uh, contradictions to it. That's my memory of of Hollywood. Yeah. But it is the place where people go to try to to try to make their dreams come true. Now the internet has changed that a lot. Really has. So in a way, Hollywood Hollywood exists everywhere around the world thanks to the internet. It's not just in in California. Yep. So I guess you could say you could say that there's a little bit of Hollywood in San Francisco, which is where I grew up, and there's a little bit of Hollywood in Detroit, which is where I live now, thanks to my uh, my my YouTube studio and my YouTube channel. So there you go. Hmm. Well, good night, Hollywood. Good night, America. And this is my last stream for July. And I dedicate it to America, the things about America, the 4th of July, and, and the cities that make America special. Yeah. Well, I hope you learned a lot. Uh, I, I did, doing my, my homework and trying to remember my experiences there. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it for this stream. And thank you. And good night.